I've made close to 100 mood boards so far, and I think I have some ideas that will help you out. Let's start with a simple one. If someone shares a mood board code with you and it doesn't work, you could try writing dash dash p in your prompt instead of dash dash profile. I don't know why, but profile doesn't work sometimes, so dash dash p will make sure it runs smoothly. And here's another small trick that you should know about. If you choose to leave personalization on by default, so that every prompt you run goes through a mood board, remember that you can write dash dash p none in your prompt to turn it off for that specific generation. I don't like to have profile on by default, but just in case you do, remember dash dash p none if you want to test the regular algorithm. Now, if you want to see the true essence of a mood board that you've created, instead of writing a normal prompt, try a void prompt. That just means use a couple of symbols in your prompt rather than words. I like to use two quotation marks, but you can literally use any symbol you like. This technique works great anytime you're trying to test a style rather than like a subject or a setting. If you're running void prompts and you're not happy with the results, you can click the little arrow next to the name of the mood board on the create page, and this will take you straight to the mood board where you can delete images and make adjustments. Speaking of the true essence, maybe I should explain an important parameter, the stylized value. Because you see, normally this value adjusts the influence of the bot's general aesthetic preference. But when personalization is on, the stylized value now determines the influence of your mood board. So if you really want your style to be emphasized, bump the value all the way to 1000, dash dash s, 1000 in your prompt. Or you can adjust this little slider right here. I don't know if I recommend going that high, 100 is the default for a reason. Because the higher the value, the more likely it is that your generations will start to ignore your prompt. Another little quick tip is to try your mood boards in style raw. I mean, they're going to be super similar, but also different. So while I can't pinpoint exactly what will happen, I can say there is at least a chance you will end up liking the results more. And I think it's absolutely worth trying it out. <laughs> like, look at that. That is hilarious and awesome. Brought to you by Style Raw. This one too, he's wielding the blade. Like, okay, thank you, Mid Journey. Try Style Raw. When you're creating a mood board yourself, you can select a maximum of 100 images. I don't know if this number will change in the future, but it's 100 for now. And I don't think it's necessary to fill your board with all 100 pictures, but there is something you should know. The less pictures you use, the more your generations will reuse the same color, while more pictures with more variety will help generate more diverse color palettes. But similar colors aren't the end of the world, as you can make adjustments to the color in the prompt itself. And one parameter that will help with that is the stylized value again, only this time we're going to lower it. Let me show you an example. I created this anime board with 16 pictures, but all of them are sort of medieval in nature, with this darker autumn color palette. Because of this, all of my generations are going to look the same, even if I happen to specify a color in the prompt. So what we can do is reuse the prompt, and then we can lower the stylized value. I think anywhere between like 40 and 60 should do the trick. And by lowering the stylized value, I'm able to override the bot's preference and establish the color I was looking for. And if your mood board does have that dominant color palette, negative prompting can also help isolate and remove those colors. Which brings me to my next tip, a good workflow for you to try. As you're creating with mood boards, you should be adding the successful generations back into the board. This should help with any color diversity problems. And this might be easiest to do if you open two tabs on your computer. So you can have one for generating and one for the mood board itself. You can even generate inside a mood board if you click on the view creations button. Because our create pages can get kind of messy and this is just one way to help keep the focus on what we want. Just make sure you don't have any filters on or it won't update live. And look at that, I have another workflow for creating your boards. This one also involves having two tabs open. One of them will be for searching back through your gallery looking for cool generations. You'll then click on an image and copy the prompt. Then you'll use the other tab to create a mood board by searching for that prompt. This will save you a bunch of time. Another random tip for you, I think you should also consider making your boards with different aspect ratios. As in, add pictures with different ratios to your mood board to help with variety. So that when you are generating in different ratios, Mid Journey has a bit more inspiration to pull from. And that brings me to my extra special tip. If you make a board full of images that contain text, I think it will then make it easier to make new images that also have text. Maybe I'm not the best at explaining that, so let me show you an example. I shared this last month with the Future Tech Academy and the community confirmed that this was beneficial. This specific example is also from 
one of my profile packs, which are available to purchase separately, or you can download them for free if you join the Academy. So I have this board of images I created a while ago with the retexture feature, these neon zoo warriors. And as you can see, the board itself is not even that coherent, but it does contain these different titles that I was happy enough with even if they're not identical. Then look what happens as I create new images with this board, albeit I do keep a consistent prompt. In this case, asking for a font superimposed on top of the image, the font is electric neon, but look at the results. And if I were to run this prompt with and without the mood board, you can see a giant difference. It's way more consistent, way more coherent. I can't believe this worked as well as it did, and I implore you to try it yourself. Train a board with images that have text to better create new images with text. I hope that makes sense, and I hope you enjoy. And here is another workflow that you can try. Find a picture that you like. It could be on the explore page, whatever. Use it as a style reference to make more images, then use those pictures to make a new mood board. This works really well if you try a generic prompt like anime to start where the resulting images could literally be anything. You can find a style of anime that you like and establish a board from those results. And I have an extra special pro tip for you. If you're trying to make more images in the same style, you could try the remix strong button and only change the subject. This will give you a good chance of creating more images in the same style. And as a last bastion of defense, you could re-add the original picture to the remix as a style reference. I know that's a little bit hardcore, but take a look at the results, especially when you combine them into a new mood board. Like, wow, this is a great technique to create a consistent style. Now, how about another small trick for you? You can actually see different random profiles here at the top of the personalization homepage. Unfortunately, there's no way to like copy and paste, but I guess you can just write the codes down manually if you really want. And then we have my last tip, which is the most amazing workflow for you to try. Look, I had made like 80 mood boards when I realized Realize that I continue to test them in the same way. Same void prompt, same parameter, same three ratios. So I turn that entire thing into a custom shortcut. And now all I have to do is write four characters and hit enter. It's wild. I can't believe it works. Let me show you how. To do this, you'll need to use Discord. And I hope we can do this on the website itself sooner than later. But nonetheless, let's go to Discord. And I suggest starting a DM with the mid journey bot, but I guess you don't have to. You can probably do this on the regular create channel. Anyways, we're going to be using the command prefer option set. Make sure you click down here at plus one more and then click on value above. Now we have option and value. Option is going to be the name of your shortcut and value is what the shortcut is going to expand into. First, we're going to create a shortcut for testing the different aspect ratios. I have the word all expanding into this permutation. That just means every time I write dash dash all, mid journey is going to run the prompt three times, one in each of those ratios. But you can call the shortcut whatever you want, and you can use whatever ratios you want in that permutation. Then we're going to create another shortcut to combine the ratios with the void prompt and another parameter. So I name my shortcut MB for mood board. And then in value, I have the two quotations marks the void prompt, stylize 400, and then dash dash all, which is going to expand into my ratios. So on the website, if I wanted to test a new mood board, all I'd have to write is dash dash MB in the prompt. And this will run my test for me. It has the wide ratio, the vertical, and the square. Isn't this absolutely wild? Big game changer, big time saver. If this was a little too advanced for you and you want more of a beginner's guide to mid journey, you should watch this video now. I hope you're doing well. Take care and I'll see you next time. Peace.